the thing about aging is that it's a side effect of being alive in the first place. So it's not something in the same way that we can cure an infection. But because it's a progressive process of accumulation of damage to the eventual point where uh, um, physical and mental function declines, we have the opportunity to postpone the ill health of old age by repairing that damage. And that repair can be done in middle age before the pathologies of old age actually emerge. So that's the goal that we have. Um, I believe that we're getting there. The, 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 the laws that we need to repair, the mechanisms, the, the processes that we need to undo are uh, not only well understood now, we're also actually g making good progress in developing those repair therapies. In some cases, those therapies are already in clinical trials. Most stem cell therapies of age-related conditions, for example, are already quite well advanced. Um, a great example is Parkinson's disease, and there are clinical trials for, um, for, for Parkinson's disease starting up all over the world. Um, in terms of the specific application to women's health, the um, point that you made at the beginning of the, uh, of the session about women living longer than men is, of course, very true. Uh, perhaps 90% or more of centenarians are women. And still, it's actually quite poorly understood why that should be true. But remember that even though in terms of longevity, women have an advantage, they have a disadvantage in terms of health. In other words, the period at the end of life where uh, one is suffering from physical and mental decline tends on average to be longer in women than in men. And of course, we would very much like to fix that. Uh, in addition, of course, there are aspects of aging that are completely specific to women. Um, the obvious one being menopause, which of course, has impacts not only in terms of fertility, but also in endocrine terms, um, in terms of the uh, changes to bone density and such like that occur as a result of the hormonal changes um, associated with menopause. And all of these things are, you know, things that we'd like to be able to fix. Um, you know, uh, it would be good to have to, for menopause to be, to be reversible. You know, uh, so that women who you know are what, being made. Point, Aubrey, uh, I would like to bring to the podium with us um, uh, Ashton to join us. Um, so, Tara, if you could bring Ashton Applewhite up on the podium with us. Uh, Ashton is an activist and the author of A Manifesto Against Ageism. Um, and with that, Ashton, you join us and then we can uh, make this uh, a conversation between the three of us, uh, the four of us and questions. So Thank Ashton, you. to you. Uh, I would love a pill uh, that would fix my, um, you know, my, my bone density, but um, I don't miss having my period for a minute. So um, I'm kind of a fan of menopause, actually. Uh, I think that the the i am all in favor of research into the biology of aging and whatever we can do to increase health span which is the percentage of our life in which we are healthy but the enemy is disease not aging and i do take issue with aubrey's definition of aging as an accumulation of damage cellular damage because i think that ignores the fact that it is also a social process a psychological process a spiritual process which enriches us and to reduce it to decline alone, uh, I think impoverishes the definition of it. Uh, there's enormous research that shows that, uh, that one thing we can do to live healthier, to uh, age well is to adjust our attitudes towards aging. There's research that came out just last week that shows that people with the more positive attitudes towards aging have less dementia even if they have the APOE gene, even if they are more genetically predisposed to it. So I think that one of the most important things we can do to increase health span also affects how your physical body functions, not just cognitive. Heal faster, walk 
um, walk better, live longer. The one thing we know we can do is address the social context in which we age in order to stay healthier longer. So, of course, I agree with everything that Ashton just said. First of all, with regard to menopause, we're talking about choice here. We're talking not about the um, w w whether menopause is something that one is, uh, is and so on. It's just that if one is physically healthy and mentally healthy in every other way, one may want to have kids at the age of 90. And, um, you know, it would be nice to be able to turn that on again uh, if one wanted to. It's just a matter of improving our choices. It's not a matter of the requirement to carry on having periods every month until one is 90. Um, in terms of the psychological and social... In terms of the psychological and social aspects that Ashton mentioned, I think, again, we have to recognize that we're not trying to turn people back, young adults, in every way by, you know, erasing the memories of every, and, and, the, and the things that they've learned over their later years, the undesirable parts of aging. You know, sometimes gerontologists actually don't like to use the word aging to talk about aging. They use the word why. senescent. Um, well, specifically, of course, to emphasize that we're only talking about the undesirable aspects of aging, not the desirable parts. But, you know, senescence is a long three syllable word. Just, yeah, when aging, that are the Well, I would love the language to change so that it's clear that the enemy is a biological process of disease and not the enormously complex physical, social, psychological process of aging itself. Because if aging is a disease, living is a disease.